Hello and welcome to a solution for assignment 7's problem number 11. And here's what it looks like. The key here is not just the calculations, but the interpretation, being able to determine what the computer program is telling you, determining what stat crunch is actually giving you, what those numbers mean. Um, before you really can do that, you, you should try to be able to predict what numbers stat crunch is going to give you. So a pediatrician wants to determine the relation that exists between a child's height, x, the independent variable, and head circumference, y, the dependent variable. She randomly selects 11 children, so n is 11, from her practice, measures their heights and head circumferences, and obtains the following data. So I'm going to click there to view the data. I'm going to open this in StatCrunch by clicking there and open in StatCrunch. And there it is. Notice the heights are in the first column, the head circumferences are in the second. Notice again that heights are the x variable, the head circumferences will be the y variable. So let me arrange my windows a little bit. Done there. Find the least squares regression line treating height as the explanatory, x variable, independent variable, and head circumference as the response variable, y variable, dependent variable. So go into stat and we'll look for regression and since we have one independent variable this is going to be simple linear regression when we do that this window pops up we select the x variable which in this case we're told the x variable is the height in inches <coughs> the y variable needs to be selected which would be the circumference the where and the grouped by again we'll just skip those next we need to determine if we want hypothesis test or confidence intervals. Well, at this point, we're just asked for the estimate, so we don't actually need either one of those. So we'll just leave hypothesis test checked. Next. Options. We don't need these options for this question, so I'm going to just hit next. Look for graphics. Don't need it for this. Next. Graph layout. We'll just hit calculate now. And when we hit calculate, this pops up tells us that a dependent variable is head circumference, independent variable is height, gives us the line of best fit or the equation for the line of best fit. Head circumference is 12.701576 plus 0.1742557 times the height. That means for every height increase of one inch, the head circumference goes up by 0.1742557 inches. Tells us the sample size is 11, which agrees with what we were told. R, the correlation coefficient, is 0.9044. R squared is just the square of that, or 0.817851. Estimate of the standard error deviation is 0 0.0987. But we just need the equation for the line, so it's y hat is equal to, and we'll go ahead and type things in, this is something times x, so that's the slope. And we need to round it to four decimal places. Zero point one seven four two five, so that rounds up up to a three. And the intercept just above that, twelve point seven zero one six. Go ahead and check our answer. Yes. Next, interpret the slope and the y-intercept if appropriate. So interpret the slope. And the slope is always if the x increases by 1, the y will increase by the slope on average. If the independent variable increases by 1, the dependent variable will increase by the slope on average. So if in this case, remember the independent variable is height, so if height increases by one inch, then the dependent variable, head circumference, and it's a positive number, so it increases by about 0.1743 on average. 
check. Interpret the y-intercept. Choose the correct answer below. Now before we look at that, recall that the y-intercept is the value of y. In this case, it's the value of the head circumference. When the independent variable, when x, is 0. So in this case, it would be the head circumference when the height is 0. That really doesn't make sense to have a height of 0 for children. So the the y-intercept is not going to actually be meaningful, um, which is what A says. It is not appropriate to interpret the y-intercept as outside the scope of this model. Now, if it was not outside the scope, then B would have been the correct answer. It's the child's dependent variable when the independent variable is 0. But since having a child's height of 0 inches doesn't make sense, correct answer is going to be A. Note that C is incorrect in all cases. C is the interpretation of the slope, not of the y-intercept. Let's check that. Awesome. So let's move on. C. Use the regression equation to predict the head circumference of a child 25 inches tall. Well. We can do that by hand. All that we would have to do is go back up to this equation. And we're trying to predict y given x is 25 inches tall. Now we can do that in our heads. We can use a calculator, or we can use Excel. I'll be using Excel here just to demonstrate this. Don't need to actually have much of a formula here. so. In A1, we'll just predict what y hat is. So this is going to be equal to 0 0.1743 times our x value, which is 25, plus 12.7016. Enter tells us that the predicted circumference of the child's head is 17.06, in this case, 17.06 inches. So far, so good. Compute the residual based on the observed head circumference of the 25-inch tall child in the table. OK, let's go to the table and see how tall that uh, what the head circumference was. The 25-inch tall child had a head circumference of 16.9. 16.9 is what we observed. Residuals are always observed minus expected. Recall back to the chi-squared test, the numerator was observed minus expected. It carries on here. We observed 16.9. We expected 17.05. Nine, one. So the residual is going to be observed minus expected, which is negative 0.1591. And it's negative because we expected something higher than what we observed. Conversely, we observed something less than what we predicted. The residual is going to be negative, and it's to two decimal places, 0 0.16. And that's below, again, because it's negative. OK, that was fun. Now we have to draw the least squares regression line, which we couldn't get, actually. So we're going to go ahead and refit this model. Let's see if we can get it through, what am I doing, stat. See if we can get through regression. Simple linear. X variable is height. Y variable is circumference. No need for hypothesis test. Options. Now, we could have predicted the height 
for the 25 inch tall child here if we wished. We could have gotten the residuals by clicking there. Let's go ahead and click on Save Fitted Values. We're going to plot the fitted line. Nothing else looks important here. That graphic is what we're going to try to match up here. So this pops up. Let's go ahead and hit Next. Notice that this gives us the same regression table as above gives us the analysis of variance table. The ANOVA table talks about the fit of the model as a whole. The regression table talks about the uh, statistical significance of each of the independent variables. Here we only have the one. We got a prediction, predicted value, which we already calculated next. And there's our line of best fit with the data plotted. So now all we have to do is check which of these three graphics looks closest to this. And I'm saying it's C. Because notice up here the top is sit by top a little bit. Of these three it's to the it's really close to that middle of these three, it's closer to the one on the left, but it's kind of midway between the two. It's between those two and high there, which doesn't seem to quite to fit this one or that one. Awesome. And apparently, oh, continue. Thought we were done for a moment. Is the head circumference of this child, the one that's shown here, above or below average? Now, if this line of best fit is average, then what we observe is below that line. So the child is going to be below average. Notice that there are chil two children at 26.75, this child and this child. One has a head circumference of 17.3, that would be this child. The other has a head circumference of 17.5. Notice that we have two children with the same independent value, but with two dependent values. So how can this be? A says it's not appropriate to use this model to predict the value of the, no, that's not true. 26.75 is not outside the scope of this model. The scope of this model runs from 24.5 to looks like about 28. So 26.75 is definitely within the scope of the model. B, it's a mistake among the measurements. Well, it could be, but not necessarily. It's very likely that two children of the same height have two different head circumferences. And C, for children who are 26, 26.75 inches tall, head circumference varies. Well, that's true. Head circumference varies for any height of a child, from child to child to child. So C is going to be the correct answer. And finally, G, would it be reasonable to use the least squares regression line to predict the head circumference of a child who is 32 inches long, uh, inches tall? Now, this is a tough question. Notice that 32 is outside of your prediction area. Um, when you're looking at a child who's outside of your range of your data, it's called extrapolation. And it's really difficult to be confident in estimation when you're doing extrapolation. Um, now the question is, is 32 inches so far outside that you feel unconfident completely? The answer is no, I, I still feel a little confident, but the fact that we run from 24 and a half to 28, which is only a, a span of three and a half inches, and the 32 inches is, is a good four inches outside of that, I'm going to say no. So what we did, in the, and that's the end of it because it says all parts are showing. So we, what we did in this problem, we used StatCrunch to do all of our estimation, even though I popped up Excel at one point just to 
to show what the numbers are and, and how we got those numbers. But we actually could have used StatCrunch to get our predicted values. There is a now, according to this, residual stored in a new column. So I'm going to minimize this. And now look, residuals are stored here. So for that child who was um, 25 inches tall, there's the residual, which agrees with what we wrote down in, in part D. So we used StatCrunch to get all of these numbers. The first step was to estimate beta 1 and beta 2, the, in, uh, the uh, slope and the y-intercept. The second part was how are we going to interpret what the slope and the y-intercept mean. Always the slope can be interpreted as for every one increase in the independent variable, the dependent variable increases by the slope. The y-intercept is always the value of y when x is 0. Now, whether or not that's meaningful depends upon whether or not 0 is inside the range of the data. And in this case, 0 doesn't is not within the range of the data. It's, it's outside the scope of the model. In C, we did some regression. Uh, we did some residual analysis. We predicted the height of the, the head circumference of a child 26 inches tall. And we got the residuals. And by the way, fitted value, 25, sorry. The fitted value is the prediction. The residual is what's left over. It's observed minus expected. In E, we plotted, where are we? There we go. In E, we plotted the, the regression line up against the data and try to match the what we got from StatCrunch with one of the three variable uh, one of the three graphics shown if we wanted to look more closely we could have clicked on that it's a little magnifying glass um, we could mag maximize it even more or we can close it we notice that what we observe are the dots and what we expect is the line and so this observation for the child that's 25 inches tall, his head circumference was below the line, below what we predict, below average. F was saying, okay, notice here that at, for we have two children at 26.75 inches tall. They've got two different head circumferences. Just drawing attention to the fact that head circumferences vary from child to child. The line is the average. It's the prediction given nothing else. But observations will vary along that line. Then finally in G, we wanted to talk about estimating uh, beyond the scope of the model, about extrapolating the data from 30, all the way out to 32 inches. And we talked about that a little bit and why the linear model fits best for that data that's within the scope of the model, with interpolating is what that's called. So for any x's between 24 and a half and 28, I guess that's 27 and 3 quarters, any data within there, the, the linear model is going to be appropriate. Once you get outside of the, the range of the independent variables, the linear model is going to be less and less and less appropriate. So if you've got a 28 inch head, I mean a 28 inch tall child, I'd say go ahead and use the model, but once you get beyond that, it, the estimates are going to be less and less reliable. So that's why we selected no here. And so that's problem 11 from problem set 7. I really do hope this was helpful. Leave me a note in the discussion. Take care of yourselves. Bye.